dreams are a place where we're at the center of the creation. And it's where our thoughts and our feelings manifest instantly in that realm. So it's an, it has incredible potential for us and experiences that we can have that we couldn't have in this waking state. But the key to this experience is becoming conscious of it while it's happening. And so that is the art of lucid dreaming. And um, I've been studying this for about 14 years. And so I've, over this period of time, I've kind of tried to compress as much information into a small package that I can pass to people because this information doesn't seem to be getting into our society yet, yet as quickly as it could be and so that more people can be having these types of experiences. So take a moment and imagine that there are two items here in front of you. The first one is a chessboard and on the chessboard it has all the pieces and on this side there's a dream catcher and the dream catcher is an elaborate um, symbol. All of us at every moment are in two different worlds. There's the inner world, which is symbolized by the dream catcher, and there's the outer world, which is symbolized by the chessboard. These two worlds, we're in both of them all the time. But we they overlap and we experience, we can kind of go through the different ones. There's certain things about the outside world that we cannot change, it's always it has a stability, it has rules, like the chessboard. It has a certain rules in which the pieces move only a certain way. If you believe that you can move them in a, in a way that's against the rules, it does not work. The other player on the other side says, no, nope, you can't do that. So, and if you believe you're the best chess player in the world, and you play someone who's better than you, then they beat you. And that's how the out, outer world works. We model our inner world based on that outer world. Dreams are inner world experiences. Our, what's happening in the outer world is we're laying in bed, but the, the world we create is this inner world based on symbols and beliefs. So a dream catcher, its power exists in that it's a symbol. We put the power into a dream catcher. It's, it doesn't have a physical tool. It's a purely a symbolic tool. And that's how the dream world works, where if we believe we're the best chess player in the world, we are. That's the structure of the inner world. So the belief systems and our thoughts and our feelings and our emotions, that's what creates the inner world. And that's also why lucid dreaming is such a powerful practice. Because you get to tap into that inner world, your inner world, and consciously interact with the things that are there. A lot of the time people imagine lucidity as like the holodeck in Star Trek. But it's but once you start to experience it, it's more like being at a festival where there's all these things going on, the dream has its own personality, and if we attempt to control stuff, it's a fun and interesting thing that I recommend everyone try. But eventually you start to realize that it's not so much about controlling things and creating a holodeck experience where you can have like hang out in paradise or meet celebrities or it's not so much about that as much as it is exploring this inner landscape that has gifts and interesting strange things that happen and messages for you that can benefit your life and for anyone who's had a profound dream non-lucid or lucid had knows how powerful and potential it can have and it's it's non-verbal wisdom too when you share a dream, you can't always capture exactly what it was that moved you and shifted your life in such a way. And so I, I've had this experience and um, in a lot of different ways, but the way that I would like to share at this time is actually one that brings me to stand here right now. Because 12 or 13 years ago, I had an extreme fear of public speaking. I, in fact, my mind would stop functioning in front of people. Thank you. And I could I contribute the practice, my practice of lucid dreaming that allows me to do this. Because one of the great wisdoms that lucid dreaming teaches is how to convert fear into exhilaration. And the way that it does this is that 
Anyone who's had a nightmare knows that the fear in a lucid dream is powerful, it's scary, and it's something that feels profound. If you can become lucid in a nightmare, there's no reason to run away. There's no reason to shift what's happening. But there's a lot of energy in that dream, the nightmare situation. And if you can become lucid in that state and stand in the presence of fear and not retreat, you can find that that energy converts into exhilaration. And as if you can shift it into that, then you're able to actually absorb the wisdom and, and move through it. Your body still has the jitters and the response, but you can be present to it. And so throughout my life, practicing lucid dreaming, I've had a series of dreams about public speaking. And, and different ones at different times in which I've accepted more responsibility to come and spread this information. 